Because if these rabbits just trying to make it down the stairs by themselves. <laughs> like that. Like that. <laughs> now I'm going to come down with the larger fruit, which would probably make a better job of it on its own. But I'm going to I'm going to hold it as a kind of. Uh, if you like a basic mutual admiration society, okay? <laughs> Okay, Roger, where are they? I don't know, I can't see them. <laughs> what do you mean you can't see them? Well, well it's, we can't come out, Sarge. So we were told to stay under. I mean, this is not safe right now. Don't be a fuck, man! Get out there and show up! Sarge, you just haven't read the book. I mean, mellow out. We've been here for weeks. It doesn't matter, for God's sake, man! Show your face and go... I'm sorry, I don't want to be insubordinate, but I'm staying by... Look, I'm an officer or am I? You're only a sergeant, man. Cool up. Look! Look at the book! I can't see, Sarge. It's dark. Well, have a flashlight! That's not a flashlight, Sarge. That's one of your parents. <laughs> So the dialogue continues for several weeks. I'll just, I'll just explain that to you in word. Uh, okay, this is me. Hold on. Um, I'm just going to use the, use the instrument.
song about acupuncture. It's really good because actually if you let enough points get into you, you, uh, you can redirect your energy so that, well say you've got a lot of fruit in one of your legs. And uh, so simple tasks like bicycling and skiing and things like that become quasi-impossible and your friends can't bring themselves to say they think you're deformed and you're not what you used to be. Well, you redirect your body currents, you redirect your fruit, and instead of all those strawberries being unpleasantly cut clustered in your hands, they kind of all around your body, little different pieces, like a kind of toll system. Every time the blood goes past another joint in your body, it gives the strawberries a dollar and the strawberry says, God bless you, sir, carry on. Some mirror mirrors here, watch your performing little way. Jacob Lurch and Mr. Moose and Dandy. Is your wax doll still crying in the fire? Is your wax doll still crying in the fire? Mainstay of British TV in the 50s and early 60s. Alan Breeze and his beautiful partner Kathy Kay captured the minds and hearts of a whole English audience who was still thawing out after the rigors of the war. Whilst the younger people caught the transatlantic sounds of rock and roll, Bill Haley and Elvis Presley, Chuck Berry and all the other greats coming through from the import shops, the old folks curled their toes and dreamed of a time when you couldn't buy bananas in the English shops. And as they looked lovingly down at the bananas, they unpeeled in their hands and sometimes passed to their loved ones, old Alan Breeze would be serenading them right there on the television. You know, I, I looked him up in a musician's union book, under vocalists. There was no sign of him. Maybe he's dead. Someone else said, well, you've only got the London one, he's probably in Brighton. <laughs> Sun mirror breakers here, your living room it glides across the sea. Or high above the waves, the wrinkled little waves you cannot smooth. We travel everywhere, we're gonna take the suburbs to the 
stars If I was mine enough I'd come on your stump If I was mine enough I'd come on your stump But don't you know This is the home county Thank you. 
Tonight there's four cubes and small piece of impacted cheese almost obscuring the top of a little book of matches. But there's a note too. Now one of the things that really bugs people is unexplained phenomena. I mean, in a way it's great because you can have that, the weekly world news, you can have something fairly simple happens like a, a spaceship crash lands in the middle of downtown San Francisco and normally people wouldn't take any notice. But uh, in this instance, somebody's worried because they can't understand why it's happened and there's all sorts of theories. It's not really, the obvious thing is it's just a spaceship. It's come from millions of miles away, the batteries have gone flat, the thing got sucked into orbit, run out of gas, steam as it were, whatever. Gravity as usual took it, and tethered it, noosed it, lassoed it and wanged it down. Millions of people were killed. Atomic fallout and particle is spread all the way from, you know, Hawaii to Nevada and little bits are being packaged off and sent to the Kremlin so they've got some too and then George Bush's administration is indecisive or you know plasmic at the moment hasn't got any definite you know hasn't got something to give to Mikhail to say look we you know we're here as well it's not just Margaret Thatcher we represent America and all the rest of it the hardest working people in the world and uh, who therefore are entitled to most of its resources and, uh, but, you know, here we are, we do have hang-ups and we do have these things like, here's a little bit of space dust. Oh no, none of this happens. No one takes advantage of these opportunities. They, uh, they just assume, you know, there's a big thing, they immediately blame it on the Russians or the Iranians or themselves, or they pretend it's actually 15 jumbo jetliners that have become mysteriously welded together <laughs> by a man from Tupelo called Mr. Hammond, who bore a grudge, and who's enormous, enormous, um, you know, mist-like, uh, you know, the kind of a wraith, a wraith-like fist, the wraith-like fist of Mr. Hammond uh, has somehow bonded these lumps of metal together and stomped the whole thing down in the middle of San Francisco. Uh, no, no, they, they have to make up these sort of spurious things. Now, this is different because we've got the cheese and we're going to find out why. <laughs> oh, we're all unrelated. Oh! <laughs> Well, the reason the cheese is here is because it's my birthday. Play I Am the Walrus, please. Thank you. I can't. I don't know it. Strawberry Fields. Strawberry Fields. All right. Let me take you down, because I'm going to Strawberry
first day, is it? Oh, great. <laughs> oh. You should have said good something. I know. Can we use your currents as well? Can we use currents from an independent source? <laughs> okay, well, it's just shine. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that you're going to be doing some of the and interests and out of this sort of plasmic bowl of confused emotions and uh, inferences and little I mean essentially if you can picture a kind of round vat with the top sealed down every so often there's a it's like a sort of garbage can with a flattened out map of the world on top that nobody can see because they're all lying underneath and there's little fiends inside the can with very very long arms that can stretch an indefinite length and every so often they try and push the top of the lid off and then you have a thing uh, it's basically a kind of psychic mallet adjuster that comes out on the top of that and pushes the, the fiends back to the bottom of the can and they all get chronic earache and things like that. But they have amnesia, so they forget constantly that they're defeated by this mallet. And so within a matter of seconds, these rubbery but uh, dejected fiends are back in place, pushing at the top of the garbage can again. This is basically how human emotions work. And then every so often, uh, there's a... There's another thing which injects kind of sour milk or a kind of mix of yogurt and gasoline that comes in through the top. And half the fiends are allergic to yogurt and half of them are allergic to gasoline, but the other half crave yogurt and crave gasoline. So when this stuff comes through, uh, first a bit of yogurt comes in, and, um, or yogurt as you call it. Uh, half the fiends go, go absolutely ape and they type climbing on top of the other fiends who have again got chronic migraine but can't remember why. And then just, as the, just as the main fiends are about to ingest this yogurt, but they've got very, very, as you know, if you try and, say you try and get, a, get some yogurt with a, a sawn off chicken's hand, uh, little, little of it actually reaches your mouth, which is why you're given the spoon. And, uh, which is great, people shouldn't abuse spoons, they should just put yogurt in them. 
and any kind of fluid you've got, you've got to put it in the right place, otherwise no one ever happens. But I think this is, <laughs> things are going to be passive in this world. So uh, anyway, there's these fiends with these, these horrible sort of thin, stringy chicken claws trying to scoop yogurt into their gaping jaws. And then suddenly all change, in comes the gasoline. And uh, the other ones, you know, barely has yogurt entered their starved and parched, ghastly medieval lips. When the other, <laughs> the other, they, 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 they too feel the onset of migraine and falls at the bottom in a sort of catatonic heat while the, the other uh, fiends spring up to get the gasoline. And they have, they don't have clawing hands. They have, um, actually, those little, like, when, you know, when aeroplanes fuck in midair and they have that, <laughs> Uh, hose can opening thing like that. They've got those, so they should be okay because they could absorb the gasoline. Only unfortunately the lids are all shut, so they don't get any either. So these demoralised and unhappy things are bouncing up and down, and this is what causes people to relate to each other. <laughs> and uh, this is a song about, a, about, you know, a kind of an attempted relationship, and like most of them, it's a waste of time. <laughs>
60, 70 miles into Russia, and uh, right as far as uh, wherever it is. They watch it. <clears throat> when Russia's over there, there's nowhere for the spare Finnish TV signals to go, so they just fall off into the sea. <laughs> Finns go fishing, why not? They have pleasure. <laughs> Picture the scene. They're on a boat. There are things coming out of the water, but quite a long way off. Towards the horizon, other things are jutting up, but correctly, nothing is wrong. The two fins are in the boat, father and son. Father, I have caught a fish. Have you, son? Yes. Pause. Good. Put him with the others. <laughs> but father, this is the first. <laughs> so where are the other fish, son? Pause. Still in the water, father. <laughs> then throw it back. But father, the water is full of television signals. <laughs> so, our television is in the water too. So you can see what's happening out there basically is more and more fish are underwater in Finland watching the TV and life gets harder for, you know, father and son to do male bonding out there fishing. <laughs> it's a dying craft. <laughs> Give it in. 
just you know, because like on the road, you get into really heavy scenes with with uh, what are they called? Chicks and uh, <laughs> chicks and fruit, right? <laughs> and it's good because I mean, I, I've got some fruit, <clears throat> and I, you know, I mean, I don't. I don't need to go any further. <laughs> I just like stay where I am, you know, it's cool. And uh, so I, you know, I'll get into some, because I go, I go back into a hotel, because that's like where I come out of. My mum was a hotel. And, and she, and me dad was a crane, right? And, <laughs> So he, he, he stands outside the hotel with his ball swinging back and forth. And eventually the manager come out and he was a geezer with a big hat, you know, like going up about 40 feet, his hat would inflate when, when takings was good. And he'd give all the customers, he'd give all his customers a free lobster, whether they asked for it or not. So he, he put the lobster, he wait till they was asleep and he'd fill the bath with newspaper and then he'd put the lobster in right and then there shut up and then one day they get they, they comes out for a shower the newlyweds in the morning turn on the shower out comes a little twist of newspaper like you usually do and then she's standing in there and then this lobster's there in the bath as well not her husband and she says here, yeah, there's a lobster here, not you. And he says, we only been married one day. I ain't changed that fast with marriage taking over my personality like you might think. So he said, that's cool. And then this geezer come in and he just threw up and walked out again. <laughs> they didn't say why he was there. And then me, me dad comes smashing through the window with his great big iron ball. And me mum goes, woo, Dennis, you've done it again. And the whole building collapses. And then nine months later, I was found wrapped in, in newspaper inside something. And that's how it started. Hang on. Right. <laughs>
up actually the whole business because uh, it happens very fast in some ways and very slow in others. And you know, your your whole life is the consequences of five minutes of people just rupturing each other when they barely know each other. It, I mean, it should happen the other end. Really, your parents should live together for 70 years and then decide to have kids when they figure out if they're compatible or not. But it doesn't work because all the organs have gone by that stage. And it's just all these sort of do not disturb notices hanging over the wrinkled carcass of your once lovely form. It's pretty hot stuff, actually. I'm 36 and I'm decaying quite fast, but I, I know I could pull out of it if I wanted to. But you know, I'm going to go. I can't be bothered. You know, it's just the stuff. That, you know, I mean, you say what? You could you could work for months and you could be Arnold Schwarzenegger, and it wouldn't really help because I've already got one. You know, <laughs> everyone was, uh, you know, they. People would come along to see one of my gigs and they'd go, bloody hell, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger instead. And they'd go, I mean, some of them would be probably pleased, but by and large, the joke would wear thin. And after a while, you know, in town tonight, Robin Hitchcock, a.k.a. Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, I mean, he'd look great with Andy and Morris in some respects. And they could, you know, it might be more fun. And Peter Buck and everybody just jiving away, but like, oh, no. So, or conversely, if I was in that, those films, it would be useless. I don't have that, that kind of physique or, or that kind of comedy style. So, <laughs> you know, uh, so anyway, being characteristically doomy, here's a pleasant song about um, all this stuff coming out. Which I wrote on a train um, between Boston and New York. And I've been back since, but I didn't write it again. <laughs> to my knees I lick your frozen treasure You cut my furry bees But one bee bubbles over Your fleshy brimming cup It falls into the cloud Chair, combing the hair, I 
Things like if you want any requests, you should say.
now it's really gone. <laughs> 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 Uh, no, Winchester and stuff are a bit slow, it goes on, it's, it's good without the hook. It's the rock and roll, yeah. roll, they're all right, that's a bit boring. <laughs> surgery, that's a bit dour as well, it needs the harmonies. Dennis Dagger! He's a reptile! He's a reptile, needs the backing vocals. The librarian! The librarian! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The librarian. <laughs>
prostitutes as well who never mind the way they smell the prostitutes are paid for it I hear you're gonna try that too I hear you're gonna try that too I hear you're gonna try that too I wouldn't pay to go to you Shelly I'm getting drunk inside my house again Watch the cars go back and forth. I watch the cars go back and forth. I watch the cars go back and forth. Sometimes south and sometimes north. I watch the cars.
Francia. September or July. I'm not sure which. <laughs> 